Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. We are pleased to be joined by Matt Jaskell, the driver of the number 46 Auto Parts for Less Toyota for the for G2G Racing in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. How's it going, Matt? Yeah, man, that's a lot, I know, but yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, so let's talk about this opportunity. I know we kind of saw you last year in the Xfinity Series, um, but how did this deal get put together? Man, it, it's honestly, the deal is more than I could even explain in a single podcast. But, uh, you know, at least to me, I think it's a pretty cool story for those that don't know. I mean, I've been around in motorsports for a very long time, right? Going back to, uh, uh, you know, Red Bull as an F1 development driver in the early 2000s. I was even on a, a, a little TV show called The Gong Show, where I, I actually drove a, uh, a, it was the Craftsman Truck at the time, yep. Craftsman Truck Series uh, at, at Martinsville for, for, Jack, for a seat with Jack Roush. Um, so I've been around a long time, but man, you know, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride, you know, and I have a story like a lot of many, a lot of people out there, right. You know, family setbacks and, and economical setbacks, you know, going back to the economic collapse in 2008 or nine, when I, uh, I, you know, had to basically stop my racing career to help take care of family and stuff. So it's been a very long journey. And, and one of the key, uh, men behind this program is a friend that I met at a go-kart track here in Vegas, 22 years ago. Uh, and he is now the owner and founder of autopartsforless.com and liftkitsforless.com. And, and the guys just always believed in me, man. You know, he, he goes back to when I was teammates with AJ Allmendinger and go-kart racing uh, for the Paul Tracy karting team in the, in the early 2000s. And the guy always believed in me. And, and he, you know, he wants to be in NASCAR for his brand, um, publicly traded, you know, trying to grow his business just like, like any other. And he called me up last February and said, "Let man, let's go racing. And so that's how this is kind of, uh, you know, culminated into a bigger program uh, with G2G stepping up to, to partner with us to help us make this, this uh, whole partnership possible. So talk about like some of the personnel on the team, crew chief, spotter, what's all that going to be like? So it's, it's actually coming together as we speak. I reached out to Stephen Light, which, uh, you know, he was my spotter and I would even call him a driver coach, man. He was awesome. You know, I, I was showing up to tracks that I had never ever seen i don't have a simulator sitting in my house uh and so steven was up in the tower you know and i was going straight to the green flag as a lot of people know with no practice no qualifying uh so so for some of these pretty wild ovals like darlington and martinsville texas i mean um i was just going straight to it so steven was helping me out and it looks like i i hit him up and said hey man can you spot for me at daytona and i think he's going to do that and and then hopefully steven will have his own racing going on it sounds like i might have um uh, Alex Rossi's full-time IndyCar spotter. So, you know, I go way back where I, I used to be Alex Rossi's, uh, Alex Rossi's driver coach uh, when he first started go-kart racing. So I might have his spotter help me out. Uh, the crew chief is Tim, uh, Tim Sleva and, uh, who I've never worked with before, but he's, he's hilarious. I got to hang out with him in the, in, in the shop in North Carolina just yesterday. And I'm back home in Vegas now, um, and got to meet some of the guys in the shop. And, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, small, humble team. It's just in there cranking away, putting trucks together. Um, but everybody was just really a good vibe, honestly, re, you know, pretty relaxed. Fun. Everybody's there to, to enjoy it and try to have a good time and some good results. Johnny Sauter walked into the garage. That was cool. Uh, that's genuinely an honor to, to have him as a teammate, even if it's just for a couple races, uh, to learn off of him uh, going into Daytona. So it's big. Yeah. So are, do you have any other plans? Like, are you going to do any other races and, you know, possibly an Xfinity cup, whatever? Yeah, of course. We definitely, we have already talked about that. You know, we, we, uh, you know, Carl Long at MBM, uh, you know, he was the one that helped our program last year with my, with my sponsor. And, and, you know, he helped a lot to get us out on the track and the approval with NASCAR. Uh, so we've even talked to, uh, to Carl about possibly doing, you know, one or two Xfinity races, maybe even a cup race, uh, to get me kind of signed off on that as we, you know, have bigger plans to move up through the next couple of years. Um, so that is in the works, but again, it just comes down to budget and timing and, and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but that is already being talked about for sure. Yeah. So what, what, what this team, of course, you know, working with Tim Vaines and all these guys and you're going to have Tim Vaines and Roger Roos and Johnny Sauter as your teammates. What's that going to be like, you know, going with these guys and, you know, working with, working with the, working with this team, what's, what's like, what's like the goal for you this season? You know, I got to be honest, we, we back at SEMA show. So, so auto parts for less.com. We were at SEMA show. We had a pretty cool presence there and we were already getting ready to, to sign a deal with, with some big name teams, you know, and 
you know, again, I'm just being completely honest and transparent. You know, a lot of times it comes down to budget, you know, and, but there was teams that were, you know, arguably a more proven team or whatever you want to, however you want to say it, you know, but, and of course they're more money, but we, we essentially interviewed and spoke with everyone and, and Tim's team just had the, the overall, everybody was on the same goal on the same mission which is to grow a program, you know, and, and to work together every, you know, Tim's out there trying to prove himself with his team and his equipment. We're doing the same thing with, with myself and auto parts for less. Um, so it, it just, honest to God, it was just the perfect fit as far as everything goes, the partnership, the potential B2B deals, the, the fund, the money, the, the, the budget, everything just made more sense to where we all sat down. We said, you know what, this, this is a good deal. Let's, let's go for it. You know? And then again, having Johnny, I mean, the guy knows how to get around a racetrack, obviously. Uh, I, yesterday, I asked him for advice about Daytona, and he said, don't hit anything. So that was, that was good advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever raced at Daytona? I have never raced at Daytona. Really? That's, yeah. W- what's it going to be like to race at Daytona for the first time? I've already thought about it a few times. I, on a, you know, after the race, I'll probably even be a little bit emotional to – you know, we've always, my father is going to come there with me. And this, again, this has been a long journey, man, you know, being in my, in my, uh, my mid thirties now. And I started karting, you know, at the age of 10 was in motocross at the age of five. I mean, this has been my entire life. And to, I've always wanted to race at Daytona, whether it was the 24 hours of Daytona or, or, or a professional NASCAR race. Uh, so just to, just to be at Daytona racing around in a professional, the NASCAR truck series, which is one of the, you know, baddest ass race cars on the planet to me, man, the racing is so wild. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a feeling of, of relief, almost like a feeling of accomplishment to have finally made it to Daytona, you know, in a professional race. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, it'll genuinely be something pretty special for me. Yeah. Um, going into the, going into the season, you're full time. But what's that going to be like to run in the trucks here? I, have you watched any of the truck races? Have you gotten used to running in this <laughs> and all that? Um, I will say that I I was actually excited about doing the truck series, maybe even more so than Xfinity, because let's be real, man, the calendar is a little bit less grueling. Uh, the races are a little less grueling. And so to go from zero to full time, is a big step, right? So if if you just threw me right into the Xfinity series, and again, I'm a very open, open open-hearted, honest guy, man. If you're going into an Xfinity series with not like the biggest team and all the, you know, all the uh, comfort creature comforts that come along with being with a big team and the travel and this and that, I mean, it's like, it's a, man, it is a tough grind, man. I mean, those races, I, I consider myself to be pretty physically fit. I dedicate my life to it. I do triathlons and I'm in the gym six days a week. I did Texas and mid Ohio and I got out of the car and was, wow, that was physically the most difficult race I've ever done in my life. Gen, you know, truly. And so, so jumping right into a full year of, of Xfinity, just right out of the gate would be tough, you know? So I, I think we're doing it the right, I'd like to believe I'm doing it the right way. So I'm, I'm very excited for the truck calendar on that side of things to see what it's like to be on the circus, you know, the, as we say, like the, the 23 races a year, the travel schedule, there's going to be other, you know, there's going to be other things to do in between that. And, and, um, and so the races are a little, you know, a little uh, shorter. So I'm, I'm excited for that part. But, and then on the other side of things, watching these truck races, man, they are, they are smash them up, crash them up sometimes, man. So it's, it's a lot of staying out of trouble and, and, you know, staying on your toes. So, so I'm excited for it regardless, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, get excited about that. What are you most looking forward to this season? Ah, uh, man, I am most looking forward to, and I think a lot of people would understand this. I'm most, most looking forward to sharing this with my friends and family that have devoted a huge part of their life supporting me to this point you know like the biggest the first thing I did is I looked at the calendar and I said what tracks do I get to go to that are super meaningful to me that I've always wanted to go to or where I can have some friends and family that have supported my entire life in motorsports to come be a part of the the, you know the the accomplishment of like yeah man we made it you know we made it to NASCAR full-time and that is what I'm most looking forward to is, is having some some really close family and friends at um at some of these special tracks. Indianapolis is a special place to me. I have some, uh, you know, really, really close, important family friends there racing at Vegas. Again, that was a big deal last year, skydiving into my own race. I'm not sure if I'll do that on Friday night in March, but uh, to race a truck race under the lights at my hometown in Vegas will be a really big deal. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. Absolutely. 
All right, Matt Jaskell, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. And uh, good luck at uh, good luck at Daytona. We'll have you on again sometime soon, maybe before that Vegas race. We'll have you on again. Hey, thanks, man. I'd love to come on again. I'll take all the luck I can get. Thanks.